Hi everyone, it's Carsten. Today we're going to be tying a simple unweighted pheasant tail. I taught this fly to a small class a few weeks ago and thought this would be a good opportunity to share it with everyone. I hope you enjoy it. The hook we have in the vise today is an RX FW560. It's a size 10 traditional nymph hook. We're going to lay down a thread foundation, keeping it relatively smooth and even. It's not crucial that this is perfect. Um, it's mainly to give us a bit of stiction. The thread we're using is a 6.0. It is a Semperfly waxed thread that you can flatten and cord. So I'm going to flatten it out as I get to the rear of the hook. Um, the reason that I want to flatten it out is that we're keeping things relatively smooth and uniform. Uh, I'm not trying to build up any bulk at the rear because this is where we're going to be tying in our tail and our ribbing. And I'm going to come forward just a little bit. I may end up with a little nub there. This is where I want to tie in my tailing material. So our tailing material is this ring neck center pheasant tail. That's our tail and our abdomen. We want to preen these barbs out at 90 degrees. And we're aiming for about half a dozen or so um, barbs. So printing them out 90 degrees to align the tips, pinching them. You can see that they're kind of aligned there. Now I'm going to trade grips and pull those barbs away. So pulling them away that way. And you can see that I've ended up with these curly bits that I'm going to cut off. That's part of the rachis or stem coming away. And keeping the tips aligned, bearing in mind that some of these barbs are going to be a little bit shorter than others, it's a natural material, just live with that. We're aiming for about half the body length or thereabouts. We don't want this to be a terribly long tail. I'm going to do a soft turn over the top. Oh. I'm going to do a soft turn over the top, pinning it all down in place. So quite a short tail because this is quite a... a, a a fragile material. Um, normally I just do one turn but for beginners I would recommend doing a second turn just to hold everything in place before you tie in your rib. So I've got some brassy sized UTC copper brown which is this nice dark shade. I'm going to pin that underneath the same position come up and over and then travel forward to pin that down and tying it underneath I'm just going to bring it to our side you can so you can see it's slightly proud of the eye at the moment so we're going to pull that to length and we want it to reach the entire length of our body maybe slightly shy so now that we've pulled that to length put the tension back on flatten our thread we're just going to come forward and you can you can travel in a slightly more open spirals if you like just to get more coverage you don't as long as it's uniform um, it's okay to to not do touching turns every time. It um, speeds things up a little bit. So just pinning it down the length, you can imagine if we ended it halfway, we ended it back here, the wire, you'd end up with a transition point there and you'd have bulk at the rear, which doesn't look very nice. So we're keeping a uniform body. And now we're just gonna come back to the point that we want our abdomen to end, which is about the two third mark to third, but you can you can go half half, um, work to the proportions that you'd like to work work to. Now instead of trying to trade grips here and um, you know, hold these barbs by the um, by the tips of the feather and, and you know do it in such a dainty way, it's much easier, especially with these short, I've used intentionally short um, short barbs. Oh, one came off. Um, pull it down, use your material ten, pin it in place. So it's just pinned in place now. I'm going to lengthen my thread, make that a bit easier. I'm going to come up and over. And now instead of holding it there, just use your thumb. Press your thumb against the uh, hook and the materials and keeping the tension on. We want that nice flat spread is what we're aiming for. You can see there like a nice flat spread to get maximum coverage. You can just pin that in place with your thumb, up and over, pin that in place with your finger. And you can do this relatively quickly when you're not 
explaining every nuance, but I want you to see what's going on. So up and over, pin that in place, up and over, and trading grips, up and over, and you can see that that's getting quite short now, so getting more difficult to, to manage. We're just going to pull one more turn at the front here, coming around our thread, and now we're just going to pinch these barbs up and forward a little so that we get a nice sort of intersection. And we're going to tie that in with two turns and then one turn in front. And now we can just trim these stubs off. Now we went underneath with our wire for a reason. We went underneath because if we went on top, um, we'd be upsetting these these tails straight away. So I like a couple of turns of wire. So we're coming under and we're doing a cross wrap, which is essentially uh, we're wrapping in the opposite direction. We, we wound away from ourselves and now we're winding the ribbing in the opposite direction towards ourselves. So you want to keep this under constant tension. And I like, I usually like two at least two, or at least one or two wraps there it gives you a nice sort of um, spot there and transition point. So I don't really count that wrap. So those wraps that, here's my first wrap, one, and constant tension here. You don't want to be able to move these around um, with your fingernail or your finger when you rub over them, as you can on a lot of commercial patterns. So the third turn, you want that ideally to be split the abdomen in half. Um, fourth, fifth and now we're just going to do one more turn that's probably going to end up being buried under the wing case okay got stuck there up and over and we're wrapping in the opposite direction so rather than keeping these parallel let's create that intersection so that we can tie that down securely. So pulling it forward, coming up and over, not releasing the tension, pulling it forward, up and over again. And we could we could pin this down all the way if we wanted to, just to really secure it. And now we're just going to worry that or helicopter that off. And coming back just a little, we're going to get that center tail ring neck pheasant tail again and we're going to pull out a few more barbs we're going to trim that to length and we're going to tie this in by the stubs this is going to be our wing case so we're going to come up and over trying to keep this uniform and on top and just travel along right to where that last rib was you can make this more pronounced if you want and go almost to the halfway point or uh, have a, depending on what bug you're imitating or what aesthetic you're aiming for. And for the thorax, this is the American flave to this pattern. We're going to be using peacock hurl, uh, strung peacock hurl instead of pheasant tail fibers. And for this size hook, I'm going to be using more about three or four peacock curls and the tips are, are fragile so I'm just going to break those off and I'm going to hold those in place I want to pin them underneath or closer to me to the side coming forward spiraling forward coming back exactly to the point where the wing case begins and now we're going to create a rope of peacock curls. Seeing this is quite fragile and we introduce some clockwise twist if we're right-handed with every revolution, we're just going to go around our thread using it as a core um, as we would wrap around a hook but we're just going around the thread about the distance that we think we'll need or require to cover the thorax. And now I'm going to grab both the hurl and the thread and hold that tightly and as I wrap because every revolution I do 
is going to introduce a little bit of twist. It's going to cord itself up nicely as I wrap forward. And then when I want, want it to unravel, I just let go and I let it unravel so that I can tie it down. Essentially, it's secure anyhow. And I'm just going to come up and forward and do two wraps over that material and one or two in front so it keeps those last two wraps in place and just trim it trim it off. Our wing case now is we're just gonna flatten that out. You can use your fingernail here and just flatten that out. But we can almost pinch that in position or just position you materials finger on top. I'm going to cord my thread in a counterclockwise fashion just slightly so the thread will want to jump back. You can see that it wants to jump back instead of forward. I'm going to do one wrap keeping everything where I want it. Just massage it if you need to. I'm going to do a second wrap behind that one. And now I'm just going to pull that wing case into place and important now is to keep maximum thread tension I'm supporting the hook with my tying hand and I'm just going to travel up and back and you want this to be quite pronounced head and for two reasons I mean it doesn't look bad to have a pronounced head but more so for the spread of thread you want the you want a decent spread of thread if if all the turns were on top of each other and you ended up with a small head um, essentially you'd be tying these slippery barbs down and they might slip and then you'd end up with the wing case pulling out so now we're going to come forward and essential here well, it's it's crucial that we make this last turn really tight before we release, release the tension we're going to come forward once and I'm still holding on, keeping tension on here. So instead of trying to cut this flush, you can, or you can use a razor blade if you're game, we're just going to get individual barbs and we're just going to break them off by pulling them against themselves. So pulling them to the rear of the hook. And you don't want to be greedy. You don't want to do too many at a time. They do have some resilience, especially towards the base of the barb. So if you try to grab four or five, um, you'll end up with a stub. So there's two there at the end, and you can see that that's left a little stub just by trying to pull that um, and being too greedy. So I've undone one, that last wrap, and just come up and over and try and clean up any of those stubs. Traveling up, and now I'm just going to quickly flatten my thread. And we're going to go into a whip finish and the whip finish it's important that we travel from the top consecutive turns two and the next one forward towards the eye pinch that pull it up pull the tag in the opposite direction towards the point try not to spear yourself and there we have it a simple unweighted american flavored pheasant tail just going to do a push cut that wasn't exactly a push cut, but you get the picture. Very simple, effective fly. I hope you enjoyed that.